Hello, this is Palico Padge, and welcome to version 1.0 of the Curious Expedition 2. We have been off for a while. There have been reasons. Uh, check out my previous videos if you want to have a look. We're not going to divulge that here, though. We're far too happy. Today, Wednesday the 17th of March, is my birthday. And the, the missus, she turned around to me and she said, Padge, well, she didn't call me Padge, but she said, Padge, what would you like for your birthday? And I could have asked for anything dear dear viewer i could have asked for up teen well i couldn't have asked for wealth i've just bought a house i could have asked for world peace i could have asked for i don't know slightly downscale the playstation 5 but i was like no 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 do you know what i want to do on my birthday i want to record i want to record because i haven't recorded in ages and i miss it i miss it so i miss it so and hey ho we haven't really uh indulged into curious expedition 2 yet properly since version 1.0 saying that though saying that a uh, little disclaimer here for you. I have actually recorded about five episodes. They're all duds. <laughs> uh, the reason being, uh, not from a gameplay perspective, because I'm recording in my office now, I have been messing about with volumes and whatnot, and they've all been a little off, shall I say. So I have been playing with the old uh, microphone settings, and hopefully this is a nice sound to me. At least I think it. I think it's a nice sound. As I said, I've been tweaking it for ages. It's been doing my head in. But I think I've got it just about right now. Please leave a message in the comment section below if you are happy or not happy with the sound. It is something I, I will constantly try and improve if you, do, if you don't like it. I think it's a little bit podcasty. It's a little bit bassier than it was before. But we'll just see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. There might be a little bit of an echo. I'm still in the process of decorating the room and trying to cover these bare walls. I've done pretty well so far. And again, microphone position is all what it's about. So I'll, I'll try to do that as best as I can. But we'll just see how it goes. It will improve in time. But by the by, we've wasted what? what what's this? Two minutes now. Jibber jabbering. Let's crack on, shall we? I still remember how it all began. Would you like to hear about it? Oh no. We know this well. I ponder the challenges ahead. The difficulty this explorer would face is adventure. -er -er. Oh yes. Oh yes. And we are going to wipe the campaign because that's how we play. No messing about here. I mean, we're not quite up to lunatic standards right now, but you know. All in good time, all in good time. Gathering together the most accomplished explorers in Paris, I looked closely at each who would become my new right hand. And as you can see, as well as the old plunder, which we played through in our last time through, shall I say, uh, we have now the Nahua Seeker and the Shenong Herbalist. Shall we take a look at them, shall we? We have the Shenong Herbalist, our follower of the Shenong Path of Experimental Medicine. Seeks out rare herbs among the cultures of the world. And they have with them, oh, that's you, Dr. Henry Lobb, a traveling quack, creates an elixir every 30 days, and he's a bit of a hothead. We also have our trusty donkey, Missy Exeter. Oh, joy. And then we have Nahua Sequa, uh, an indigenous adventurer who has set out to find their own answers, follows a path of pacifism and discovery. Oh, no, not one of them. Right, so we have Nalu, the arbiter, who detests violence, but has a little bit of a bella view distance and we have Cuthbert Gay the sailor and well we've we played with sailors we know how they work so this is going to be a sort of pacifist run I would suspect unless you really want to annoy you detest violence I guess that means they don't get involved in fighting hmm we'll have to have a look through on that one but not today not today we're not quite there yet let's play with Shen Ji shall we Ah, oh, Paris, 1886. I missed it, so... Way before that big monstrosity of a tower was put up. Spoiling the view from this lovely... I don't know what this is. Patio area. <laughs> Let's crack on. I looked out upon the exposition grounds with a smile on my lips. Malin had chosen me to uncover the secrets of the islands. I vowed to not let her down. So, because we've played through the game, what I'm going to be doing this time around, because there is still a story to be had, is... I won't be repeating myself when it comes to the different things we do inside an expedition. So if we hit a cave, I'll read it out. If we hit another cave, I won't. I'll just gloss over it unless something unique happens. That way we should be able to fit in a bit more into the episodes. My heart pounded with anticipation of the fame and glory that lay before me. But first I would need to hire some assistance. Oh, what do we have here? Finished most expeditions in 80 days or less. Uh, that can't go too well for me. But look at that. It's a stovepipe. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, now, I did take um, part in the last one, which was 
horribly erased. Did we get it? We did not. At least I don't think we did. Do we have to claim it? Can't even remember who I did it with now. Uh, I don't think I won anyway. Oh, no, no, I didn't win. Never mind. That's okay. So, yes, we need to uh, employ someone. I entered the famed Basu Cassier, the broken compass, and surveyed my surroundings. Renowned as a meeting place for would-be explorers, it was a likely place to find eager adventurers to join my trek. Well, let's have a look, shall we? I gave word that I was looking for adventurous sorts to join my expedition. Soon I had gathered a small set of candidates to choose from. We have the sailor, the Taoist monk, and the translator. Ooh. Village rest sanity of plus two. Combat buff. Pure spirit. 15% reduced damage from supernatural enemies. And they're uh, unbalanced. Oh, aquaphobia. Same thing. And we have a sailor. <laughs> Free naval flare. Um, I'm going to go with the Taoist monk just for the sake of keeping things different. I mean, we've played with a sailor before. We've used translators in the past, especially in the first game. So let's go with the Taoist monk. Did I truly want to recruit Huang Lei, the Taoist monk? You bet your bottom dollar. A Taoist monk trained as a warrior in the battle against supernatural evil. Huang Lei was sure his services would be of use of my, on my expeditions. I'm sure they will. Loving the yin yang cat. Might have to take that off you. Oh my dear, didn't mean to do that. Back we go. Right, so. Let's get out of here. When I returned, the expedition grounds were quieter than I had left them. I enjoyed the rare moment of peace in the city. Alrighty, so. Uh, th something I didn't t pay attention to. Right, we're ranked 10 with Lux Labs. We are now rank 8, and we are now rank 11. Oh, it looks like we're going to go with the Tai Chi Academy. Join the competition. Join, join, join. Although we're not probably going to do it, but never mind. Leave, and uh, well, we've got hats. We haven't chosen a hat. I mean, I'm looking pretty bumpy. I'd, it doesn't really hold out much hope or alternative medicine if I have skin as bad as this, and I'm supposed to be an expert. So, I mean, what do we do? Do we wear the Caesar's... Uh... Oh, beautiful. It gives him hair. It does give him hair. It looks a bit weird in a Caesar haircut. I think it's going to have to be Biggles again, the Baron. Look at that. He's beautiful. He's, oh, he looks so jovial. So happy. He's just he's just happy to have the glasses. As, as are we all. As are we all. Let's crack on. In the days leading up to my expedition... Excuse me. Far too much saliva in my mouth there. Rumours had been circulating about new islands that had been found, similar to the one Malian had stumbled upon. Sifting through these rumours, I planned my course based on those that seemed the most likely to contain grains of truth. Bars and triangulations, or the golden pyramid? Yeah. Jungle. And Tai Chi. Awesome. I was set to set sail the next morning and decided to enjoy a final night out. As I sit my drink that evening, I was approached by Annie Oakley, the American sharpshooter known for her uncanny accuracy. I ain't afraid to love a man. I ain't afraid to shoot him either. Great. Starstruck, I chatted with the celebrity about inconsequential things for a while before she introduced the topic of the disappearing islands. Oh, I know your game. I smiled and deflected, pretending I knew nothing. Oakley pressed harder, but I would not reveal Malian secrets to a complete stranger. Is that a gun in your pocket, Miss Oakley? Eventually, she grew impatient in the face of my evasions and bid me good night, striding off with an air of irritation. Eccentric lady, if I say so myself. Uh, she's going to be another Isabella Bird, isn't she? Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, well, never mind. We shall crack on. As I neared the side of the expedition, a small supply ship pulled alongside. The Taiji Academy had provided me with a modest budget to outfit my trek. The shopkeeper had me loudly and handed over a small package. A gift from Malin. Oh, chocolate! For my first solo expedition, I was sure it would prove useful. Right, so. Medikits are cheap. Although, I don't think we'll need any medikits on the first run. At least, I don't hope we don't need them. However, a few more torches. Hmm. I mean, I'm not a big fan of cocoa wine. I think we buy all the food cans and it leaves us a bit of money to spend on other things. We can go for... Uh, I don't know. Climbing gear, I guess. We like to climb stuff. Six left. I mean, another torch? Why not? I say okay. My equipment chosen, I considered if there was yet more to be done before I landed on the island. No. 
So, uh, oh, yeah, we've got to beat it in 80 days. Ancient legends told of a great golden temple on the island that loomed ahead, a massive ancient thing, and made of pure gold. I was to find this legendary structure adding to the already substantial honour of the Taishi Academy. Awesome. Well, we're going to keep it old school for our first expedition into it was ex Expedition 2 version 1.0. And just go and find the bloody golden pyramid. It's what it's what the game's built around, you know. And, oh, there's something evil down there. You can just see a little bit of red. Evil, I tell you. Evil. Uh, what do I want to do? Let's climb up here first and get a lay of the land. Oh, well, there's a lot of land to lay and not a lot going on in that area, though. I might come up here. If we get accosted by the locals, so be it. Bizarre. Hmm. I suspect this is the village. Let us wait a second. Because the locals will get closer. Do -do -dum, like that. We encountered a small hunting party in the wild, so they approached us cautiously, spears at the ready, radiating suspicion. Wow. Jeez. You just thought you'd be a bit more friendly. Oh. Have these people only got one eyes? Is that like a false eye? Or or they just... Is the sun on the right side of their faces and that's why they're squint? I don't know. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. Maybe they have to give an eye to the gods. I think I'm looking far too deep into this. I felt pinned by their stairs. Mm -hmm. And perhaps I had never seen a rest of them before. The leader demanded to know what our intentions were. Uh, do we offer to help the hunt? Yeah, let's be friendly. Let's be friendly. We've done it. Da -da -da -da. Good first roll. We're going to peak early, I feel. They welcomed me to their hunt and I proved myself valuable when I managed to take down a wild animal on the run. They cheered my success and we shared the spores of the hunt. The hunters stood stoically before me as I considered what to do next. They were clearly eager to keep moving. Right, so, uh, well. What's your name and where you come from? I wanted to know more about the culture of these people. Delicately, I inquired about the nature of their traditions and customs. A native explained that they followed a way of peace. Your hunters, that's that's not possible. A native explained that they followed... <laughs> where others use warriors, they trained arbiters, specialists in resolving conflict without resorting to violence. That was my phone going off. Oh, birthday text. Gotta love it. Should have put my phone on silent. There we go. All done. So... Yes, you can, I suppose you could, you could talk an animal to death, I guess. And the hunters did not want to tarry further. They disappeared silently into the wilds, and soon it was as if they had never been there at all. Huh. Okay. Oh! Oh. Why is... Why, why are you angry? Oh, because the heights. He don't like heights, does he? Eh. Sorry. We'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll get you cured, don't worry. I suppose I did just do it in two, two goes... In a row, which is probably not the best. Oh, look. It's an old camp. Before me lay the wreckage of another Trex campsite. The air stank of death and I wanted to leave as soon as possible. Not before we search. Uh, I mean, mm, this is why we bought torches. Da -da -da -da. It's a shame we didn't have... Um, more blue. I stopped the trek to begin a thorough search of the camp. It wasn't much, but I managed to, d to discover something worthwhile in the wreckage. Oh, some firecrackers. Lovely. Uh, do we stalk prey? I mean, we'll give it a go. I've never been too successful to this so far. I can see the beast on the horizon, its ears twitching suspiciously. Hunting it would take time and entail risk. It could pay off. Ooh, or we could... No. Maybe? Possibly not. We've got a better chance of killing it. Da, 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 da. I spent more than a day following the beast, taking care to stay off wind and out of sight. My patience was rewarded when I managed to ambush the animal, taking it down cleanly. What was it? An oryx pelt. All right, we'll take it all. Uh, oh, oh, we, we have a trader. I think now is the time to go down south. Maybe we can interject with the trader and the village. You're dumb. 
Upon my arrival, a native informed me that no weapons were allowed inside the village. They offered to bury my weapons nearby so that I could pick them up again when I left. Alright. I mean, it's only... I got shovels, so that's why. They took my weapons and sent them off to be buried somewhere near the village. I could use a shovel to dig them up again once I had left the village. Alright. The villagers welcomed me with smiles on their faces. Right, okay, so. Oh, we can meet with the ruler. Or we can learn herb lore. That is my speciality. Let's do that. I haven't done that yet. I spent several days learning about the traditional medicines of the indigenous people. When we finished, I gathered several samples for my work. Interesting. What's that then? What is that? What do you do? Rare local herb samples that will be studied eagerly back home. If necessary, can be consumed to soothe body and mind. Oh. We've only got the one though. It's quite a bit of fame. So yeah, we'll keep we'll keep that. Cool. What we got to trade? A woman from the village unrolled a mat, revealing the village's trade goods. Uh, all right, I was kind of hoping for something better. Uh, we need the native trinket to keep our Taoist monk happy. Um, after that, I mean, we could go for the horn flutes. They're pretty cheap. And, uh, a, well, we can have a tanning kit as well, since we've got this. Let's take one of those and all of those. And in turn, you can have all the meat. Oh, they're still not happy. Oh, what's our elixir? Anti-infectorium! Sounds like a Harry Potter spell. Leverages the latest advances in germ theory to cleanse infected wounds. Oh, okay. All right, well, we'll keep that, I guess. Um, well, we don't want the firecrackers, do we? Still more? Uh, okay, um, a shovel? Oh. Can I have a firecracker bat, please? No. Can I have a meat bat, please? Two meats? No. I'll do. Close enough. Um, right. Uh, oh, we're overburdened. That's fine. Do we want to do anything else? I mean, well, I suppose we can meet with the ruler. Inside the elders' hut, I saw that they were fiercely arguing over some obscure point of law. I stayed silent, waiting nervously until they had finished. After a moment, they noticed my presence and all eyes fell on me. I swallowed and quietly introduced myself. I could feel tension in the air, but was allowed to make one request. Uh, no, do we ask for a request? I mean, we could recruit, but there's a chance it's not going to go our way anyway. They won't come home with us. Let's, let's ask for a quest. I inquired if there was anything I could do to help the village. I was told of a relic of religious significance that had been stolen long ago. They had a map, but I would need to dig it up. Oh, I've got... You know what? I've got shovels. We'll do that. I was given a map and a shovel and instructed to take the greatest of care. The relic was of great importance and they prayed for its safe return to the village. My request granted, I bowed to the council and left them to their business. Right, okay, so now we can rest. We unpacked our belongings and prepared to spend the night with the natives at their campfire. The night the natives made a feast in honour of our visit and politely offered us a very strong alcoholic beverage. Beautiful. I drank the beverage, not wanting to offend the natives. It tasted bitter and I stayed up long into the night, drinking and laughing with the villagers. Ah. Uh, going loco down in Acapulco. Awesome. I forgot we got the trade as well. I enjoyed the safety of the village for several days. Uh, we're done. We're done. We're done. We packed up and departed as new adventures awaited us. The natives seemed indifferent to my departure. Oh, good to know. Good to know we left an impression of them. All uh, right. So, uh, trader. Trader, trader, trader. I mean... Yeah, to my surprise, I encountered a colourfully dressed travelling merchant. He gave a wide grin when he saw me placing a bulging pack full of wares on the ground. He proudly presented us with a selection of his wares. I couldn't help but wonder how he had acquired such goods so far from home. Ah, oh, this is what I'm talking about. Right, so, we have a revolver. Or pistol. Uh, we have the storm lantern, which is fine. We have a crucifix. And a chronometer. Minus 20% days per tile move. That is good. That is good. All uh, right, so... Uh, ooh. 
says I'm overburdened. I can't see how much by. You know what? We're going to come back out of this for one second. Because we are going to use the tanning kit. Can't use anything right now. Okay. Fine. Uh, tanning kit. Where's my tan? Oh, 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 oh. All right. First, 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 first. That on Dr. Henry Lob? No, no. Wang Lei. There we go. Ceremoniously, I presented the trinket to Wang Lei, praising his recent efforts. He blushed shyly, accepting the gift. Awesome. Then, 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 we want to... Oh. Where it be? There it be. That evening, I prepared my tanning tools. That pelt right there. I can confirm. Awesome. Right. Now we can go back to the trader. So... So, 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 so. What are you worth now? Oh! <laughs> 13! <laughs> right, we want you. We definitely want you. You are cheap, and you are cheap. I mean, what would it take to outfit us with those? You can have... You can have the pelt. You can have the meat. We're way off. You can have all the horn flutes. Oh, we're not even close. Uh, you can have... We're doing all right. You can have the, the climbing gear, or the food. Oh, the oh, it loves the food. How about the elixir? Uh, running low. Uh, torches. Why? Where? Oh, I've still got my shovels. Uh, I tell you what, we'll keep. We'll, we'll drop one shovel or two shovels. I presume I only need one for that. You know what? That's that's good enough. That is good enough. Cool. Uh, right. So. Oh. Is that my buried treasure? Right. No. Right. So that's that's my equipment. I'm gonna go get my equipment. So we'll go and do that now. I mean, it's nice then to actually show us where it is. That that's good. You've acquired the treasure map. All right. So dig up. After many hours of digging, we indeed found something valuable hidden beneath the surface. Oh, it's my sensor, which is apparently a weapon. I'd... All right, fine, fine. All right, so I mean, are we are we are we even close to seeing this? Oh, it's there. It's right there. I tell you, it's not going to be there now, is it? <laughs> it's not going to be there. Oh, let's give it a go. Digging into the soft earth, I soon made a discovery. Treasure! Opening an old rotten chest, I found the village's religious artifact inside. Oh. A golden mask used for religious rituals returned to the village for a reward. I mean, it's worth quite a bit of fame. And they don't have to know. They don't have to know that I've got it. Should we continue? Let's continue. I'm, I, I don't think it's something we have to worry about right now. I mean, they, they'll they never know. Oh. There we are. Um, hmm. Right, we need to go to the right to find the pyramid. So before we do that, uh, I'm going to go to the left. This will all make sense in a second. Outpost. All right. The natives of this region had set up a small dwelling that they used as a resting place for their best scouts. We greeted each other warily. Scouts are direct? No, we're not, we don't need that. That's fine. Right. You know what we've got to do, though? We've got to actually start equipping some stuff. So, oh, and people can get better. I say get better. We can promote people. Um, You know what? Capacity would be good. Hooray! Um, what are we going to give people? I mean, I can have my sensor back. I'm fine with that. I think, I think our traveling quack, our traveling, <laughs> our traveling quack can have the gun. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I personally am going to have the chronometer. And we'll give Huang Lei, although it's not his religion per se, uh, we will give him the crucifix. Cool, daddy-o. 
Right, I think we're done here. There's no, nothing's going to be in the corner. It'll be fine. I mean, I've got this here. Do I want to use it? Let's just get to it and make sure it is something we can do. It is not. Okay, so to the other side. Hello, Sanate. Oh, no. Right, so eat the chocolate. Might as well eat all the chocolate. All gone. Uh, approach the shrine. I love chocolate. I arrived at a majestic stone structure. Tendrils of a dark purple fog swirled about, much like the mysterious mist that surrounded the island. <gasps> In we go. Inside was a small damp chamber. A long hallway led to the altar room ahead. I would have to be careful of traps here. Uh, we need some greens. Just make sure. Good thing too. No, not really. Never mind. In a shadowy alcove, I noticed a brief glint of light shining from the gloom. Treasure! Oh, actually quite a bit of treasure. Nice. I stashed the treasure and considered my options. Well, let's carry onwards and upwards. Before us lay some kind of ceremonial room. A thin layer of mysterious fog hid the base of the altar. I feared that disturbing the treasure would cause the fog to spread. Alright. Oh, more! I felt a strange sensation in my stomach, as if the floor had dropped away. When I emerged from the shrine, I saw great banks of dark fog gathering on the horizon. Ozy nosy. Oh! The hyenas have legged it. It is far too scary for them. They are gone. Let's see what this way is. Wild plains. Go up north. It's up north still, apparently. Can we get around to there? No. Hmm. Approach stone circle then. We came across a crumbling circle of stones. Arcane inscriptions etched into each rock seem to indicate some sort of map. So are there more ruins? Is that what, is that what it's saying? And settlements. You know what? I'm going to reveal the cave. I closed my eyes as I touched the cold stone and a vision coalesced in my mind. Thought so. So I'm not too fussed about going down there. We are running low on Sanate. And we definitely need to go northeast. Let's roll. I mean, 80% It's not good. There we go. Not good. I knew we needed food, but still I was surprised when Huang Lei suggested slaughtering and eating dear old Missy Exeter. Are you kidding me? She's the only person who's actually been upgraded. Promoted. That's the word I'm looking for. We're not gonna we're not gonna butcher Missy. How very dare you? Oh, he's angry. Do you want me to starve? We would need the we would need the creature. No sense killing it now. Huang stomped off angrily. That's alright, because I reckon that's where we need to go. Da 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 Awesome. We made it. The Great Pyramid towered above me, glinting in the sunlight. There was a strange quality to its architecture that I'd never seen before. The halls of the pyramid were empty, but engraved symbols of warning on the walls would keep archaeologists busy for years to come. Nice. Excellent. All went according to plan. And there we are. We made it back. We'll just click through this. There's no need to hold on. Bring the treasures. Seven tickets off the first expedition is not a bad start at all. Oh, yes, we got this bit. Polyglot reduces standing costs for staying in villages. Nice. Spiritual solidarity allows resting for free in missions. Very nice. Or strong mind, max sanity plus 15. Very, very nice. Uh, for the sake of it being slightly easier when it arises, you see, usually I'd go for strong mind because. More sanity equals good. However, resting in missions is very expensive generally. Uh, so being able to rest for free is definitely the better perk to have, as far as I'm concerned anyway. So we shall go for that. Upon my return to Paris, the street urchin delivered a note from Mailing asking to meet in her office at the rear of the Boussol Cassier Tavern. Oh. Well, I guess we'll be going there. Let's do it right now. I entered Victoria's office at the arranged time and found her waiting impatiently. As I told her of my journey, her eyes shone with excitement. She peppered me with questions, intense in her hunger to learn every detail of my expedition. Hours passed before she was satisfied. 
Eventually, Victoria revealed that she had been collecting reports, and that the machine we had found on that first island seemed particularly important. She needed to go, but pressed a handful of expo tickets into my hand as she escorted me out of her office. These were good as gold in this area, particularly at the Explorer Clubs. Oh, nice. We've got another 12 tickets. We are literally swimming in tickets, Scrooge McDuck style uh, but we shall crack on with spending those tickets in the next episode. So thank you for watching. As always, a like is appreciated, and I shall catch you on the next one. Take it easy.